Welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 23. Today it is Altus South. If this is the first time you've been watching any of these videos, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description below. If you've got any tips you don't stick in the tips, comment so other people can look over excess tips. But otherwise, we are starting from the Air Tree Grazing Hill. We are heading east-ish to this little camp. And we're going to be doing a bit of an item run right at the start as we progress through Altus. Ah, there we go. Intro done. So there is the Great Shield Talisman Lovely. in that carriage. Um... I think that's probably just gives you more stability in your shield, I'm gonna Yeah, great, great Shield Talisman's pretty good. And then there's a Troll's a... Golden Sword. Exactly what it does, yeah. Also not a bad pickup. Um, pretty decent Colossal Weapon. Um, can't remember if it's infusable or if that one's stuck with Troll's Roll. I might have to double check that. So, follow the path that we're taking through these camps. There's very few items in these camps, actually. Um, so, once it's cleared out, we just don't really need to head, like, come back here or anything. Um, there's a sacrificial twig. So, that's like a talisman that when you die, you won't lose your souls. So, if there's going to be like a point where you know you're going to die, then, you know, you can stick that on. And, uh, like, for, like, for certain suicide runs for grabbing items or whatever, and you're like, oh, well, I'll, I'll die on the way there, but at least I won't lose my souls. So now we are heading south-ish towards the Dectus Lift, which is again the other way that you can go up to Altus that isn't the ruin strewn precipice. But there's um I guess some ruins that is like to the southwest of here, I suppose. Uh, and that's the Lux Ruins. There's not really a lot there, but this is the ultimate guide. We are gonna go there and we're gonna do it. Now, you were standing at the base of those before. It's where Raya was, if you watched the last part. She was at the bottom part of the ruins that are beside the tree gazing hill grace. Um, as you run up, there's going to be a bunch of demi-humans. There's this item here. Lightning proof dried liver. They're actually very, very valuable. Don't waste those. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a bunch of demi-humans at this ruin. There's a scarab with a unique ash of war. Some string, which is apparently one of the rarest crafting items in the game. But this scarab is one of the ones that can teleport. As you can see, it just fucked off. We yep, can respawn so... it by save quitting, which I think is exactly what we're going to do. I think um, it is, yeah. Um, oh. I thought there was like some scarab residue or whatever, but there isn't. Uh, so if you just save quit, <laughs> you can just immediately like do this. Um, I don't know why the fuck I decided to do it like that, but you just, just shoot it from the stairs. Genuinely, that's all you have to do. Throw a kukri at it or something like that. And then down below here is another demi-human queen boss, which um, is just another boss a... that dies to this build specifically. Yeah, this um, boss is a joke. Just walk up, ground slam it a few times. Um, it stands will break after the third one. Oh, apparently not. Or should have broken after the third one. Then even. Should have broken after the third one. You know what? Just hit it. Like, yeah, just hit the this... boss and it will die. It's a bit of a joke of a boss, um, and if you you could summon Mimic here if you wanted to, I just I, just, I couldn't be arsed because it really is that easy. When it comes to the demi humans, they have some drops. So we've got the Ritual Sword Talisman. Um, so that's one of the ones that gives you uh, it's the multi attack damage buff. Yes. No, the Ritual no. Sword is bonus damage at full HP. Ah, so it's right. Very very good actually, and it has some some amount of synergy with the Bubble Shield as well as the health regen flask, because it means you get two uses out of it before you're forced to heal. It's quite oh, good. Oh, sure. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. So, as you can see, if you drop down from the back of the Lux Ruins, that takes you back to the Air Tree Grazing Hill. But we're heading back to Altus South. Uh, at least I think that was Altus South. And uh, now we're just going to head back to the main path and then kind of uh, keep pa like keep past it to the south. And now we are heading down to an Evergeal. Now, just quickly, when it comes to the Demi-Humans, they can drop the Falchion, the Club, the Spike Club, the Great uh, the great Knife, the Bloodstained Dagger, Rickety Shield, String, Glass Shards, Rune Fragments, Rainbow Stones, Glow Stones, and Volcanic Stones. Um, and basically, they're, they're just going to drop the weapon that they're holding. So if they're dropping the Great Knife, they'll drop the Great Knife. If they've got a Bloodstained Dagger, they'll drop the Bloodstained Dagger. Etc. Now, I'm pretty sure this is the um, Godfrey retrain. Yeah, this is the um, reskinned Godric the Grafted. Um, it's actually, you know what? This can be quite a pain in the ass, and the reason is because you can't summon. 
because you're in an Everdale. So really the strategy is going to be... Uh, can it not? I seem to remember nope. you telling me this one can. Uh, you can't bleed Everdale enemies. That's the, the recurring uh, theme. Well, there you go. Um, but no, it's going to be the standard rigmarole, though. We're going to drink the flask... Uh, golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, run up, R slam it, try and keep him uh, poise broken for as long as we can, and instead of taking the reposts, we're going to get multiple attacks on it, usually. Um, but otherwise, it has exactly the same moveset as the first phase of Godric the Grafted, with one variation, and that is that it gets the triple axe slam from Godric's phase 2, instead of the Dragon Breath attacks in its phase 2. Given that this guy kind of counters exactly what our main strategies are, it is certainly a, a realistic thing that you could just wait until the end of Altus Plateau where we um, get the great stars, and that would probably do a better job at dealing with this guy. So that is just something to bear in mind. We're just showing you that you can do it just now, but again, this was a, a kind of a, you just kind of have to get good moment um, because frankly, our build isn't particularly good isn't particularly geared towards beating this guy. We're not doing a whole lot of damage, and we also can't bleed him. Um, yeah, so, really, yeah. it just sort of counters our whole strategy. Um, especially considering he's a reskinned shard bearer, so he's going to be tough than the uh, tougher, sorry, than the other Evergill bosses that we fought up to this point. Um, he can yeah, present we'll a little bit of a problem. Yeah, this is what I mean. He can present a little bit of a problem as you're seeing. But it's nothing that some well-timed now slams can't can't address. Oh, we didn't run out of heals. Never mind. We run, we run out of blue flasks. That's what we ran out of. Ah, so we were about to run out of our slams. That was the problem. So, I mean, as you can see, our slam is still doing good for. I mean, we think we broke his poise three or four times over that fight. So that's pretty good. Um, but frankly, I think I, I would probably suggest just coming here a little bit later once we have the great stars because that will be a much easier time beating that guy. For sure, for sure. Now, we got the Godfrey icon from that, and that is arguably one of the best talismans in the game. So it boosts um, any chargeable Ash of War or spell, and it gives you a very substantial buff to your damage on anything that can be charged. So Ground Slam is not one of the ones that can be charged, nor is Lion's Claw. But something that can be is the Ash of War of the Marius Executioner Sword that we got in the last episode, grabbing the Stone Sword Key from the camp there. And since you can charge and hold it, you will get a substantial damage buff from Godfrey's Icon, and the same applies for any chargeable spells like the really hard-hitting um, Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike and some of the chargeable sorceries too. We're running straight past this Knight's Cavalry, because we need to grab the Grace first, but then I think we take the Knight's Cavalry on, correct? Uh, I don't think we do it just now. I think I think we do leave that till a little bit later. Ah, okay. I mean, we, we might do it just now, but I, I think we leave it. I know there's a Scarab on this road, and this one's kind of a pain in the ass to see. There is. It is it's, it's basically invisible. You see a little puff of smoke. That's the Scarab, and then you get Earthshaker. I was genuinely it made me angry when I found out that there was a fucking scarab there. Uh, there was also Bok. <laughs> uh, this isn't another. This isn't a point in the game where speaking to Bok progresses his quest, so you don't have to speak to him just now. I don't think. Um, but regardless, you maybe speak to him anyway. But if we speak to him, you speak to him. If we don't speak to him, you don't have to speak to him. Um, <laughs> yeah, just saying, that, just saying that Bok is there and he can alter your armor sets if you need him to. I think the distinction to be made there is that Bok can alter them for free. Whereas right, you see, can alter them see. yourself, but it costs runes. Thank you. Right, yes, thank you for uh, for clarifying that. So in one of these holes, I think, is some gravity stone chunks. Oh, it's a gravity stone fan. Regard... Fuck it, sure. So that's the uh, that's the consumable item that, co uh, that creates a spell, right? Yeah, that's correct. And there were some chunks. Um, so you're getting some points for that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you credit. Okay, I get um, half points or something. But as you can see, there's a, there's a big glowing pit at the end of here, and up and coming is one of the tougher bosses in this area. 
He's kind of a pain in the ass to deal with, but is this going to be the debut for the boys? Or is this going to be the mimic? I... I, I wouldn't wreck... I don't think it's the boys. Um, I, there must be like an edit coming up or something. There's no way we use the boys for this boss because that's just definitely not correct. Um, now, what you... There's no way we're about to summon the boys. What the fuck? I think we're I about doing? to summon the boys. Here we go. It's boys time. <laughs> the, the majority I, I of guess the boss's this... attacks deal physical damage, so... I guess this. I mean, it was. I mean, it's been literally months since I recorded this footage. It must be at least four months. So maybe I, we did summon the boys for this boss. I I genuinely can't believe that. But yeah, this is the fallen star beast. Now again, I would suggest leaving this boss until we fight the fallen star beast in Mount Gelmir, which is we will be fully equipped for beating him at that point, and then you can use that strategy. This is just us fighting it just now, simply because it's here. But I would highly, highly suggest, um, because we want to do the guide in order, we don't want to be backtracking, which is why we do things as best as we can when we're doing them. Uh, but strictly speaking, uh, I would wait until Mount Gelmir and then copy that strategy specifically uh, for this Fallen Star Beast. But... Now see, the boys are doing really well here. Um, they're not dying fast which is something that you very much don't want a tank summon to do. And when I say tank summon, what I mean is if the enemy is dealing mostly physical damage or all physical damage, the boys are incredibly resistant to that damage. Now, we're just going to clear up this one enemy here because he might cause us some problems. But as you can see, the boys are keeping its attention really well. It's not running away, as the Falling Star Beasts typically try to do. That scoop attack did almost nothing to them. They can taunt the boss to get its attention. They can throw pots that inflict frostbite. They're just so good. Look at them go. So strictly speaking, uh, the reason f I guess the reason for summoning the boys against this boss is the fact that he will very, very rarely actually aggro on you because he has to split his aggro six ways. So because of that, you can then just wail on him because he's never actually attacking you. Um, so that's that's one use for the boys, and I suppose maybe that was a good highlight of it. Um, because they, they actually, strictly speaking, done quite well. You were able to just hit him with whatever your strongest attack is, and just kind of leave it at that, because he's pretty much just wailing on these, like, five other guys that are barely taking any damage off him. So, okay, okay, I will concede the boys were was actually not so bad. But, again... The better method is waiting till the Mount, Mount Gelmir Fallen Star Beast and then copying that strategy. Um, because that strategy is uh, extremely, 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 extremely good at killing Fallen Star Beasts. But oh, now yes. we, uh, we avoided the Sentinels outside the gates and now we are going to uh, rest at this grace, pick up the two Golden Seeds, pick up the Map Fragment, that's what we just done there. Um, and now we have the map for Inner Altus, so that's cool. And uh, now we are going to do the, um, the the twin tree sentinel boss fight. Yeah, of this which... fight can be kind of a pain in the ass. Um, again, we don't have the proper tools to annihilate tree sentinel enemy, or tree sentinel type enemies yet. That comes after we get the Great Stars and we slap Lion's Claw on it because that combination will absolutely eat these enemies alive. Especially yes. considering you can fight them one at a time. And if you summon the Mimic as well, it's technically a two-on-one. So... Once yes. more, as with the Falling Star Beast, you might want to wait until we are fully equipped for fighting this thing. The recommended time... Uh, that uh, Okay, so the recommended time to fight these things would be after we have defeated the Draconic Tree Sentinel, um, and that would be Altus Inner episode, um, that would be that's when we are fully equipped, quote unquote, for fighting these guys. But we do have a stopgap method, and that is using Double Slash plus Blood Flame Blade. This is a technique we've used a couple of times, um, and honestly, I absolutely love this. Uh, this one Tree Sentinel did give us a little bit more trouble than the than all the other times in testing or whatever. But strictly speaking, it's it it just puts out so much bleed. And it's like so quick. Double slash comes out so quick. Um yeah, no, I'm a I'm a big stan of double slash. Uh, particularly when it's like to put bleed on something. 
Because this is effectively, um, there's a weapon in the game called Rivers of Blood. This is pretty much Rivers of Blood at home when you combine it with Double Slash and Blood Flame Blade. Yeah, basically. Um, in a lot of instances, actually, it would be better than Blood Flame, uh, than Rivers of Blood in the strictest sense because the Uchi Katana can achieve actually higher physical damage than the um, Rivers of Blood can. The Rivers of Blood will achieve higher fire damage. So if the enemy is vulnerable to fire, that's great. If it's vulnerable to fire and bleed, even better. But if it resists fire or it's immune to bleed, then having double slash on a Nutri Katana would actually prove to be more effective in those situations. So it's worth keeping in mind. Uh, like I said, this particular tree sentinel gave us a lot, well, gave me uh, a lot more hassle than all the times that I tested using this method. It just, I was just getting pretty unlucky in terms of like what it's attacking and where it was attacking because it just seems to be doing a bunch of like AoE attacks and it's like getting behind my guard or whatever or I just wasn't guarding or I was dodging really badly. But ultimately, I'm, I would still consider this to be a fairly good strategy. Keep your guard up, either block the attack or dodge the attack and then you just hit out with double slash when it's like, you know, facing away from you. Now, you might think that this technique would be good against the Black Knights. It is not, because they move about way more than the Tree Sentinels. Now, yeah. what we can do, however, is because we have to fight both of these uh, Sentinels, either, well, we want to fight them one at a time. We do not want to be fighting them together. But what we, uh, so we kind of have to, that's why I didn't reapply Blood Flame Blade, because I have to sort of, um... <laughs> I, the boys I, are back. <laughs> So I didn't want to reapply Blood Flame Blade because I only have so much uh, healing to go and hit so many blue flasks. But when it comes to the second one, we also have the boys as well as Blood Flame Blade and Double Slash. And again, this is a perfect example of where the boys is great because this guy is never going to aggro on us. Obviously he hit us yeah. because his attack was like sweeping or whatever. But again, if this thing's aggro split six ways, is he's just never going to be actually like trying to hit you. So you can just, you're free to wail on him, effectively. Oh, we haven't hit him yet, by the way. We, we Look haven't how much hit damage him yet. it's taken. <laughs> the boys are just eating him alive, because it's what they do. God, I love that spirit ash so much. Look at him go! <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, the boys is absolutely the most fun spirit ash in the game. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> But strictly speaking, if you're able to split your aggro six ways, it's that's genuinely a fantastic strategy. It really, really is. They and you get incidental. It. Look at that. Yeah, we get incidental frost damage. So it's it's, it's <laughs> it does feel like a bit of a meme, but actually the meme is actually a bit of a dream because currently, I mean, he's only killed one of the boys. The aggro still split five ways. Oh god, I love him so much. Um, I will mention quickly before it dies that you can... You saw it was facing away from you. Once it reaches that position, it will never turn around again. So you can just sneak up behind it and poison mist it, as we showed with the Dragonkin soldier in the Shifra River episode. You get this the Urtree true. Great Shield from killing it, which has a unique Ash of War that allows you to reflect magical projectiles, and it turns it into a holy bolt of damage that you can actually make hit really hard. It's not as good as it used to be, because you used to be able to proc it from self-damage, but you can't do that anymore because they patched it out. Damn. So it would appear that now we're going to do the Black Knight, and again, so this, I know this is three bosses in a row that we are reiterating this. Uh, it's probably best, I mean, we've said this with every Black Knight, but it's probably best to just wait until we have the correct stuff, that being uh, Lightning Bolt, is that what it's called? Thunderbolt. Once we have Thunderbolt, that is when we should be doing um, the uh, the Black Knights. Now, I'm just using the double slash attack just because I still had it equipped. But we're using Electrify Armament. And, I mean, I guess it's, like, it's decent. Um, it's doing okay, but it's not doing as well as Thunderbolt would be. No, no. So, again, you come, come back and do the Black Knight once. I mean, this is... It's not helpful with these guys. I should add, I should absolutely have uh, killed those guys first. Um, those are the guys that are, like, patrolling down the road. Kill them first before fighting the Black Knight, even if you do have Thunderbolt. You do not want to get to this situation. It is absolutely not advised. Um, so, again, 
Come back to this guy once you have Thunderbolt, otherwise just kind of copy what we're doing here. I mean, you'll have fought many a Black Knight by this point if you have been fighting them and you will know that they are a complete pain in the arse and there literally just isn't a fucking solid strategy outside of Thunderbolt. Um, and then when it comes to the Fallen Star Beast, wait until Mount Gelmir if you want to come back and do that. And when it comes to the Tree Sentinel, wait until we've done the Draconic Tree Sentinel just at the right arse end of the Altus inner episode. And uh, that's when you'd be fully equipped to fight them. But otherwise, you just want to be dodging this guy's attacks, blocking them when you can, getting your hits in when you can. Uh, double. So what, I kind of misspoke when I said Double Slash wasn't good. What I meant is Double Slash isn't as effective as it was against the Tree Sentinels, where Double Slash is actually kind of decent. Um, there's just nothing that's good against the Black Knights, aside from Thunderbolt. Uh, but yeah, now we're just heading north, and strictly speaking, where we're going now is we are effectively cutting off Seleuvis' quest. We're actually just grabbing the item for Seleuvis' quest, so when we go to do Seleuvis' quest, we've already got the item in our inventory, and we don't need to go back and get it. That being the Amber Starlight, this is just a key item that doesn't have any effects, aside from progressing Seleuvis' quest. Yeah, something I'll mention, though, in that area, there are a lot of sacramental buds. They're quite a rare crafting material, and you can use them to make cures for Scarlet Rot. Um, so if you're in need of a bunch of those, if for whatever reason you're not using Flame Cleanse Me, maybe the self-damage is too much for you. Don't know why it would be, but maybe it is, um, and you just want to use the consumables, then that is the place to go to grab a bunch of those quite early on, because as we've said in multiple parts now, you can make it to altars without killing anything. You can get both halves of the Dectus Medallion and ride the Dectus Lift up here um, and grab things from the altars plateau without having to fight anything even further. Now, we took a wide berth down this left-hand path to avoid a rune bear because, as we've said again in previous parts, you want to avoid fighting them at all costs any way you can. We're heading into the Perfumer's Grotto where we're going to be grabbing a bunch of items, fighting a boss, and getting a weapon. So in the Perfumer's Grotto, surprise, surprise, there is a bunch of Perfumers. So they can drop the, their armor set, so that's the hood, the rope, the gloves, the sarong. They can also drop their shield, as well as Miranda Powders, Budding, Cave Moss, and Altus Blooms. Uh, so we're just sticking the lamp on because it's kind of dark in here. And um, this is one of the more interesting caves in the game because it actually kind of blends into the game world a little bit more naturally. You'll see in a second. There's like a interesting connecting point between two underground areas. Or, I guess not, un I mean, it's sort of underground, I guess. Yeah, it's sort of a shame you couldn't actually bridge the gap and go from one to the other immediately. That would have been a fun alternate route you could take. But it's yeah. nice, at least, that they do intersect in a way that is unique in Elden Ring's game world. So there's, uh, oh, I can't remember, I think, the, I mean, there must be a, a perfume bottle. Yeah, perfume bottle and... Another one? Maybe? Ten living jar shards. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're definitely, like, fucking looking through this beforehand. But it is a very short cave. Now, we're just going to run across that branch, and then we're going to whip the bow out, and we're going to use this to kill the, um, what do you call these things again? Malformed star. Yeah, that is not what that is, but, um... I mean, that is what it is, but the name just clearly is is not... It's a bad name. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, like, let's, let's talk lore for a second. It seems to be one phase in the Falling Star Beast's life cycle. So I assume sure. that a Falling Star Beast lands, then it hangs itself from a ceiling like it's a cocoon, turns into this thing and then eventually turns into, like, a still, you know? I guess. Yeah, okay, uh, I suppose. Right, look, I'm, this is just speculation, all right? We're filling time while you're shooting something with a bow and picking up a pointless item. All that for a fucking arterial leaf. And then the boss... It wasn't worth the well. arrows. I'd have rather well, had the arrows than the arterial leaf. Literally, literally. So there's a Miranda Powder, a Warming Stone, a Golden Rune 5... Two golden rune fives, and now the boss is just a fucking joke. Uh, luck. So interestingly enough, the best thing for this boss is you know, golden vow, use your physic. But specifically, um, we should actually have put on blood flame blade for this boss because there's a Miranda flower, 
Oh, we do have Blood Flame Blade on as well. Okay, cool. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to summon the Mimic Tear, and then we're going to use Blood Flame Blade. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, we spent a bit much time at the start of this fight fucking about pressing the down arrow, but what you... Oh, yeah. Mimic going in with the Rotten Breath. That'll yeah, come so in I, handy so later. I accidentally summoned the Mimic with... Um, <laughs> with the uh holding the, the the dragon seal so that means that he's just gonna like use spells as well um god i'm struggling to string a sentence together today point is though I mean, is you can just use double slash and blood flame blade and that completely annihilates the flower and then the omen killer i mean really almost making this more complicated than it has to be but it's it will shave a couple of seconds off hitting the flower i guess yeah, I suppose. You got the Great Omen Killer Cleaver there. It's a... I think it's a Great Axe that inflicts bleed. It might be a Great Hammer that inflicts bleed, but I think it's an axe. Um, and you get three of them in each playthrough. So, you know, for when you unlock Arm 3, just like Neck 4, Aye. you uh, you could equip all three at once and just be like a spinning wheel of death. So... We re-equipped a slam. Um, I would actually recommend that you experiment with double strike uh, or double slash rather. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so there's a couple of omens there that we're just going to avoid, but in the meantime, we're going to pick a perfume bottle up from that little camp. The omens again can drop the omen cleaver, the warped sword. Uh, not the warped sword. This ain't Dark Souls two. Um, the omen cleaver and the warped. Now the warp axe is kind of it's kind of special actually because it only scales with strength, gets S scaling in strength when you infuse it with heavy. But if you infuse it with something like bleed, for example, it has the status effect build up of a great axe, but the swing speed of an axe. So you oh. can actually really effectively use it on a status effect build. So it would have been great, actually, for the build we're using right now. But we've come to this little church here. And dying on the floor is our old buddy, Yura. Now, take care of this dog that used to be the scariest enemy in the game. Grab the Nagakiba from Yura's body. Pick up the sacred tear from the church and we'll be invaded by Eleonora. Now, uh, again... Eleanor uh, can, can inflict a ton of bleed damage, so you do need to watch out for that. But we have Ground Slam, which means uh, this bitch is going to die pretty quickly. So, as you can see, though, if you get caught in that combo, that bleed meter is going up pretty, pretty fast. So, you could indeed stack some bleed defense if you got her. But otherwise, a Slam is probably going to be good enough, frankly. Yeah, you'll be fine. But well, interestingly, easy, easy. We, we did get the Nagakiba and the Eleanor's Pole Blade. Now, the Nagakiba is actually uh, the Washing Pole. Um, I didn't even realize that was in the game because I thought it was the Wakizashi. Uh, so I got them mixed up. Magic Grease in that graveyard. So the Wakizashi is like the Dagger Katana thing. Um, but the Nagakiba is the very, very, very long Katana. And um, so if you're enjoying the Katana... Uh, that is an alternative weapon that you can use because it is actually very good and the reach is fucking phenomenal. Uh, so very good for like big tall enemies. So there is a noble, a, a little fucking hollow dreglin guy up there and we're sniping him because he has a golden rune 10. He is one of the nobles that's like holding a chest or whatever and uh, at least the first time you kill them, they'll drop like a big rune. Now we As are with just... The harpies okay. and such the like you can only kill them for it once once you once you've obtained it once from them they will not drop it again yes yes so we grabbed the blood grease off that carriage now we're heading to mount gelmir now we're just coming here just to be able to grab this grace because it's like sort of on the kind of on the way um but now i think we're going to warp back to the crossroads i, I imagine yes yeah it looks like it and I'm going to guess that we are now going to be heading north uh, to the sort of like middle part of the uh, Altus Plateau, which is kind of like a, a, a kind of shady foresty era, area, rather. Uh, and this, we're going to now be coming up to the boss where the boys are, as far as I'm concerned, actually like the absolute best thing that you could get. 
Um, now, if you didn't watch the last part, uh, that bit that we were at... Oh. oh, so, right. Corrin should have been there. Now, um, what you have to do is speak to him here in the round table. Um, and then head back to where we were. So I'm actually kind of happy that we showed this because Corrin should be at this little wall. If he isn't, go back to the round table hold and then speak to him. And then yeah, to be clear, the, the trigger for getting him to move here is having visited the Altus Plateau and sat to Grace. Once you've done this, you can then go to Corrin and the next time you speak to him and rest at another Grace, he will move to this location where he'll be looking for the Noble Gold Mask and he will also have Great Heal available to purchase. Yes, that. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty sure uh, that you... You may or may not want to do uh, to do this because uh, Gold Mask is tied to an ending. Um, although it's tied to a group of endings that give you the same um, trophy. So you don't need to worry too much about specifically getting Gold Mask's ending. But if you just want to do his quest to get the ending, then sure, this is you can do it. So, Merchant here. And um, this guy sells uh, some stone sword keys, he sells a cookbook, and then he also sells, um, I think it's technically the bit of armor that's supposed to go with the great helm that we're wearing. Um, I mean, I certainly yeah. think so. I think that's the drippiest piece of armor in the game, so it pains me that you passed it up, but it's not optimal, so I know why you didn't. So we are putting on the, uh, so we're getting the golden great arrows from the bridge, but... Uh, what is the talisman we put on? It's the it's the Death Blight Resistance Talisman. Um, Prince of Death's Postual or Prince of Death's Cyst, depending yes. on where you are through the game. I think that would have been the Postual. So we're heading directly north, um, and this is essentially because it's just going to make our lives a little bit easier to get the grace that is directly north, and there's like a, a, a weird, awkward jump that you have to do to get an item so we're going to do that just now get it out of the way and then continue along with the rest of this area um so to get to it you have to go all the way up to this like ruined bridge so it's pretty easy you can't really miss it just look for the ruined bridge and then head all the way back up to the the back of it and then get the uh the spirit spring jump and then the grace is under here i actually went through and then, like every playthrough of the game until the last one I didn't even realise this was here, so... <laughs> it's actually a pretty useful grace as well, so I was uh, wasted a lot of time by not having it. But then there's also an item on the bridge, so that's why we wanted to do this and just get it out of the way. Yeah, so there was a sending gate um, near the grace on the bridge that we last broke that. Um, that would have taken you to this end of the broken bridge, um, and it would have taken you directly to the Noble Gold Mask, Speaking of which, we just picked up his mask there. And the reason for putting the Prince of Death's Postual on is the enemies we're riding past here are worm faces grabbing a golden seed just at the edge of the mist woods. They are fast boys, and they can inflict death blight on you, which is why we wanted the increased resistance from that talisman. Yes. Uh, so I'm just heading straight back to this grace. Um, I was only riding in the direction until I could... Uh get out the aggro leash of certain enemies uh, just so I was able to come back here so you know whether you ride back here or walk back here or whatever just come back here and now we're going to start the actual process of clearing this area out so um, I guess we're just we're heading south this is like well we came a little bit south and we're actually overall heading west there's a grace around here and then we head further west and then there is another rise puzzle this being the absolute fucking worst one of them in the entire game if you ask me um, I would also suggest just avoid the worm faces. What I'm doing just now is there's a, a scarab in between the worm faces, so I'm going to just try and kill the scarab, uh, like, from a distance. There we go. Somersmith Somers is on five. And then we're just going to continue on. Uh, because trying to grab that scarab whilst being death blighted off three worm faces, that's just not worth it. So just get a bow. Do yourself a favour. Get a bow. Then we can pick up that golden rune three. We saw if you there, there we go there. So there's this is the mirage rise. You actually have to like make it show up um, because it's invisible. 
You know what, honestly? Don't make it show up. The reward at the top of this tower is absolutely not worth the trouble it takes to get it to appear. So, honestly, <laughs> my stance on this is just don't bother. Pick the items up in this valley and move on. Because as you can see, there's these um, sigils hidden around and it summons phantom imps to accost you while you're trying to solve a puzzle. So you're dealing with one of the more irritating enemies in the game that is surrounded by an enemy that has the capacity to instantly kill you in an area that's hard to navigate because it's misty <laughs> to look for sigils to get a reward that isn't worth it. So that's um, got two sigils. There was one sigil directly where the mira where the rise is supposed to be. There was one in that corner. And then this sigil is this rock here. You have to hit the rock and then the sigil will appear. How anybody worked this out? How fucking anybody worked that out? I mean, it does give you a little note that's like, this is the Mirage Rise clue, and it puts little X's where the, the solution is, and I guess the imps kind of signify that you're near one, but honestly, fuck off. Like, it took me, I want to say it took me an hour and a half to find that sigil on my first playthrough. Fuck this place. I, I'm glad that I just I just Googled it. I was like, w what is this? And then when I found out it was the rock, I was just like, that's, this isn't gameplay. <laughs> no. This is just wasting time. That's what this is. So we're heading back um, back west from the grace and then the, the, the rise has appeared because we've touched all three sigils. Something quote unquote puzzle. No, just no, massive I can't time waste. It's not even a so puzzle. I can't remember I can't even remember what the item is. Don't tell me. I'll t I'll tell you if that was worth it or not. Okay. So there's two items up here. There is a <sighs> unseen blade and unseen form and five slump yeah, just don't even bother. <laughs> Just don't even fucking bother. Yeah, so it's two spells that are completely useless in... Well, one spell that's completely useless in PvE, one that is outclassed by a talisman in PvE, and some eggs. That's your reward. So, uh, we now have enough golden uh, golden seeds to upgrade the flask again, and I think we're now going to do the worm face boss. And, um, yes, we are. Sorry for the cut there. Because initially I was insistent that, nah, the Mimic tier has to be better. The boys can't be the actual solution to this. Um, and as it turns out, the boys is actually the actual solution to this boss. There's so, no way the boys are best for every boss in this part. Oh, contraire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that enemy just there is an Air Tree Guardian. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so they can drop the Air Tree Guardian set, the Air Tree Guardian, sp or the Guardian Spear. And the ones uh, that are exclusive to uh, Lindell can drop the Air Tree Guardian set and there's a, a full bloom version of it and then that can give you um, increased potency to your uh, red flask. So you heal more whilst you wear it. But that big fucker over there, that is the worm face boss. And luckily we can actually summon the boys just before we activate the boss. Um, and as a result... What we're going to do is we can use Golden Vow at the boys. And then we can buff all the boys with Golden Vow. Now, the reason why the boys are actually particularly good against this boss is they are immune to Death Blight. They cannot be picked up by this thing's grab attack. And all this thing's attacks barely do any fucking damage whatsoever to them. So it is possible that the boys could actually solo this thing. Um, however, what we're going to do is use... Um, either blood like uh, blood blade or um, bloody slash and we're gonna wait until this thing has stopped doing a big stupid fucking spasticated death blight move and then we're just gonna hit it with blood blade from a distance and that is the nice safe option and then that way we can stay out the death cloud we don't we're not gonna get death blighted because this thing can death blight you so fucking quickly if you're not careful the terrain is terrible but otherwise the boys Look, this thing can't touch them. So, yes. So, you saw we got the Guardian Braces uh, from that one Guardian that we killed. So, yeah, it can drop the Guardian set. But that is how you kill 
the worm face the proper way without getting randomly fucking death blighted and then tearing your head out in frustration. <laughs> Once again, the boys paying dividends. They're just good for so Baffling. many different scenarios. I love them. I love them. They're my favourite spirit, Ash Barnon. So, hilariously, the boys are still a bit summoned for us. Now, in that ruins just there, we there was a scarab. Uh, we got a cookbook. And then there was also a scarab that dropped a uh, golden slam. Now, you might be tempted to think that golden slam is actually better than ground slam. Just because it does more damage doesn't mean that it's better. The problem with uh, golden slam is it actually sends enemies flying backwards. But it doesn't do the poise damage in the same way that ass slam does. Uh, or, I guess, sorry, the specific name is ground slam. Just so you don't get confused. Um... So yeah, Ground Slam is actually just kind of better than Golden Slam, even if Golden Slam does do more damage. It's besides the point. Um, which is, which is odd, you wouldn't we... think... Oh, go on. I was going to say, another key item for our strategies coming up is the Icon Shield that we just picked up there. Now, that's a Great Shield, Class Shield, so it has the stability of a Great Shield, but it also gives you passive health regeneration. Now, this ruin that we're in now is filled to the brim with worm faces, but you can just jump down here and grab uh, Wrath of Gold without really drawing their attention, and then just use Torrent to sprint straight back out so that you don't Aye. get caught in a cloud of death light. And now I think we are moving on to the last part of this episode, which is the other half of the Perfumer's Grotto Cave. Uh, so this is effectively, we're now coming in from the other side, and um, again, this is another cave that it doesn't have anything uh, to pick up going down this the side route. So you, you can just take the lift down here. It's quite a lot to grab in this one, actually. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't quite remember. Yeah, there's a fair few items, and some of them are pretty good. So, obviously, there's a lot of smithing stones. Um, these are marionette soldiers. Well, actually, these are avionettes, strictly speaking, and their only unique drop is the avionette bird helm. Um, grabbing a rune out from the chest. There's going to be smithing stones. Again, we're not going to mention these every time we pick them up. You can see in the footage where they are, and we do grab them all, so you can use this guide as a reference. Um, but yeah, one of the major things that we get from this tunnel is a bell bearing that comes in real handy. So these guys can drop the digger staff. Um, pretty sure that's effectively the only really relevant thing that they drop. Uh, they can drop digger staff and other various things, but that stuff is kind of... We've, we've spoken about that so many times, I can't be arsed talking about it over and over again. Um, because we do need to take the fact that you're hearing the same information over and over again into account. But, yeah, there's a lot of them here, so just kind of beware. Um, try not to get ganged up on. But Aslam is very, very good at dealing with these guys. And, yeah, there is a Sombra Smith and Stone 5 in the wall. Um, an Arteria Leaf. Yippee. Great. I'll add it yeah. to the pile. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Because they really wanted to make Arteria Leaf happen. It just isn't. Right. What Arteria Leaves are used for are the perfume consumables. That's really their only use. So they do have a purpose. It just doesn't come in handy until you've got all the perfume bottles, basically. Because it's the only thing you're ever going to use them for. God, Aslam was, really came in clutch there, getting jammed in between by two enemies. Now, this bit is actually... Not difficult, per se, but is a little bit finicky. This jump, just be careful doing these jumps because you can easily slide off this big branch thing. Yeah, and I will say that this room we're in now is where the malformed star would have been. It would have been hung at the far side of this chamber. As you can see there, that's the branch in the distance that we picked the other arteria leaf up from. Um, nice. Nice. Yeah, be be um, careful because I was I was uh, about I was I think I was like as I was falling I was like screaming in anger and then I was like oh okay <laughs> yeah the malformed star would have been pelting you with rocks the whole time you here if you hadn't done the other cave first so it's kind of a pain in the ass you grab the arsenal charm plus one which is irrelevant for us because we have the great jars arsenal which is just an upgraded version of it but that is effectively a carry weight increasing ring we just happen to have the stronger version of it already. 
Uh, so just in, in case it wasn't clear, doing the Perfumer's Grotto first makes this a lot easier because trying to do that, like, jump on the branch thing is going to be a lot harder if you're getting pelted off that thing's attacks. So now we're on yeah. to the boss. Another boss I, I cannot remember. I think it's Crystallians? Yeah, two of them. Epic. Nice and easy. Especially considering now there's two of us. Even easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so, right, the the strategy for these bosses is just, is just Aslam, that's it, just use Aslam, that is how you defeat these guys. Yeah, one hit staggered, two hit, armor broken, repost, dead, rinse and repeat, until both. Like, one hit, staggered, two hit, armor didn't break, but I think probably because it was airborne, but it's dead anyway, so who cares. There you go, done, bish bash bosh. There's you, the Bill, there you go, talking about. Yep, the Somber Stone Miner's Bell Baron 2. That's infinite threes and fours when you turn it into the Twin Maiden Husks. So now uh, we're we head back to this um, sort of northern Altus Grace that we got. And um, I guess we're just going to try and level up if we can. As you can see, we have as soon as we got to our 40 Endurance, we have just been dumping straight into Vigor the whole time. And now we're at 50 Vigor. The guide is to get to 60, but later on in the game we do need to respec a little bit, so that puts our vigor down a bit more. Um, you'll see when we get there, and that'll be in the next part, actually. Uh, don't upgrade your weapons, because we are going to be um, changing weapon next part, so just stay with whatever they are currently. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. And okay, there we go, that's Altus South done. Join us in part 24, where we're going to be doing Altus Plateau North. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.